We just got back from the dry cleaners to take apart the NVIDIA RTX 3080 Ti. The GeForce RTX 3080 Ti. That's right, this is the, this is the, the Ti. That's what we're calling them now. So this card looks an awful lot like the 3080 Founders Edition from the outside. What we're curious about is has NVIDIA improved the internals at all? It had some problems with memory cooling especially. This is something that we actually found but didn't fully understand back when we originally reviewed the 3080 FE. So now that we're done reviewing the 3080 Ti, which is in a separate video on the channel now, and talking about how NVIDIA is not greedy at all because they only priced it 20% higher than everyone thought they would, we can take the thing apart and see uh, if we can find where the extra $200 went. Before that, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. We use Squarespace for our own GN store and juggle complex multi-piece orders all the time with it. Squarespace makes it fast for us to roll out new products with detailed pages full of galleries, videos, and descriptors. It's also useful for your own resume sites, for photographer or project portfolios, or for starting your new small business idea. There's never been a better time to try and start your new business than right now. And we can vouch that Squarespace makes it easy. Visit squarespace.com slash gamersnexus to get 10% off your first purchase with Squarespace. So we're gonna start this teardown by comparing the two cards. The main thing to look for is going to be internally again, whether or not NVIDIA's changed the thermal pad placement or layout. It's the 3090 FE that's really the biggest concern here, but the 3080 wasn't perfect either. So this is the 3080 non-TI. And visually, if you look at it, it is identical. So even down below the surface of the fins, it's still the same heat pipe positioning. We'll see all that side by sides as we get through this teardown. So they're the same. There are a couple small differences visually, but not any functionally that we've seen yet. There might be some underneath. So visually, the TI shroud looks a little bit shinier, and otherwise the IO plate changes color from this sort of matte black-ish to the more nickel-plated copper look. It's not copper, but... That's the look it has. So that's pretty much it. We can just start taking these things apart at this point. We already have a 3080 non-TI teardown for the FE from when it came out. If you would like to see that, that's on the channel. But this one should be a lot easier now that we know what to expect. There is one more small difference, actually. Right here, these two screws. So these screws are for OEM and SI use. And it's basically for a GPU support bracket that would ship in a pre-built system for whatever reason. In our original FE model, they were not pre-installed in those holes. That's something we've seen a lot in the past, too, with previous generations. But uh, in this one, they were pre-installed. doesn't do anything, but it is a difference. So now I know a lot more about this card than when we did the first teardown. These are held in with magnets. We still are not quite sure how the magnets work. Uh, maybe one day we'll find out. And underneath the magnets, it's a Torx screw. I think it's, from memory, a Torx 5, might be a 6. We've got all four of those removed. So in the original, we get to skip some of the excitement of the original 3080, where uh, the NVIDIA, like, teardown assistance guide for media or whatever, I would have been better off without using their guide. They'd never done one of those before. It had something about using a, a glue stick to remove the little magnetic things, and turns out if the glue stick glue drips down between the magnet, then it gets stuck. <laughs> and so we had to, I think we had to drill one of them out. I used a hammer at one point. I know it definitely made a lot of people very uncomfortable seeing, seeing what the 3080 shroud went through. I assure you the card itself is fine, but the, uh, the shroud in those four areas has definitely seen better days. Okay, those four screws are removed. We need to take this thing out now. This is also held in with pegs, and I think there might be magnets. It's easy enough. So this is the uh, ghost finder that they include. So I am working on the GN PC building and teardown mod mat. If you'd like to pick up your own mod mat, you can go to store.gamersnexus.net. This is the Volt model. It's on back order. Uh, very high demand, but we do have the originals and the mediums in stock and shipping now. Four screws under the ghost finder, and then the back plate comes off. So we should be ready to remove the shroud at this point. Let's go ahead and take that off. Oh. Huh. Uh, 
Okay, so the back side, we have thermal pads. The, the money, I'm not sure, is a great thermal conductor, <laughs> but there's some thermal pad placement. So uh, there's a pad right here on half of the filtering capacitors. I, I don't know why those line up with that. They do make good contact, but it, it's just kind of odd that it's there and not anywhere else. For the other thermal pads, we've got contact here on uh, voltage controllers and other controllers on the board. There's contact to these capacitors at the edge. And then there's a thermal pad contacting these capacitors also at the edge. Curious if we peel this back a little bit, what'll be under there. These pads easily get destroyed, so I try not to tamper with them too much. We do have replacements if we need them though. Okay, so those are different capacitors from the other ones, which might be why they've been given thermal pads, but still. NVIDIA is still wasting space here where it could be using the backplate for uh, conducting more of the heat away from the backside of the memory. So memory as always, flip chip, that means the memory silicon is closer to this side of the PCB than it is to the top of the black packaging, or depending on the, the layer count in the PCB, they're very close. So there could be thermal pads here for some additional conduction from the back side of the memory effectively uh, to the back plate, make some actual use out of it. So NVIDIA hasn't really learned or Im improved in that regard of its design. If we pull up a quick side-by-side -side of the 3080 Ti versus the, sorry, the 3080 Ti versus the 3080, there are a couple of differences, but not too many that we can see here. The original 3080 didn't have the pads covering the top half of the capacitors but the rest of the thermal pads are placed in basically the same locations, almost identically. A couple of the capacitors have moved around on the back of the PCB, but few of them get removed or replaced entirely. So like that one's different. I think this was here on the original 3080FE and that one's different, but, and, and we've got some differences in the memory capacitors on the back, but otherwise it's, it's basically the same thing. So we need to take this apart further to see if there are any meaningful differences once we get to the memory. Okay, so we're gonna pop these open and get the, uh, the cables out. These ones you have to be really careful with. Okay. I normally bend this one over this direction get it out of the way of the PCB. This one just slots back and then the connector can come out. So you want to push that, or actually it's a pull I think, isn't it? Yes. I remember this one being a little bit scary to remove. Why can't we, why can't we do normal things, NVIDIA? Why do we have to do stupid, weird things? There we go. Hey, gonna ruin my really nice tweezers from Taiwan. Trying to work on the 3080 tie. Okay, now we're ready to actually open this thing, but we, we are going to be able to open this. It's not too different than the original so far. Nothing different on the assembly or disassembly side yet. NVIDIA was really proud of this originally. Uh, basically a spring, just a retention kit. Ready. Wow. That was the cl cleanest removal of a heat sink I've ever experienced. Well, that's good. Uh, so everything stayed intact for the most part. Okay, so did a quick side-by-side -side comparison of this and the original, and it's actually, it's, it's the same. <laughs> There's not any differences here for the most part. So the only other difference is the memory module count, which makes sense. We have four, eight, and then three, and then one more. So we've got 12 modules on there. The original was missing two, it's a 10 gigabyte card. This is a 12 gigabyte card. All of that makes sense and lines up. And so also the VRM would be affected because the memory VRM would be affected by that. But the only real change here is that we've got a missing uh, phase here. So missing inductor and power stage, and then the same up here. Whereas on the original, it was two of them. I think they were both down here or over on this side somewhere, but that's the only, only difference. It doesn't really mean a whole lot. One thing that's kind of interesting is this heatsink. So the heatsink 
Uh, let me just make sure this looks identical. So the heat sink does have a date stamped on it. If you remember, 3080 Ti rumors have been in media since probably the 3080 launched. Sorry, 3080 Ti. Uh, I keep messing that up. Nvidia is going to come get me. So the 3080 Ti that was in the rumors back then, uh, we reported in January that it was pushed back because NVIDIA was trying to avoid further bad press and, about supply and was trying to build up supply of its existing SKUs, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, you can see the effect of that here. Where the stamp date for manufacturing is December 15th, 2020. And uh, just as a note, this could feasibly be used for a 3080 as well. So it, I mean, but that would be kind of weird because they're selling everything they make. So they've been trying to build these for a while now. Uh, just because the heatsink was made in December, though, doesn't mean the rest of the board was. They were probably waiting on silicon supply. So NVIDIA could have manufactured the entire thing except for the GPU and just had a board and a cooler ready to go as soon as they could stamp a GPU on the BGA. And, and that would be all there is to it. Kind of interesting, though. OK, let's check the GPU. So I'm just going to clean the rest of this GPU die off, and we'll see what the new one says. Wow. Huh. So GA102-225-A1, that's kind of interesting. The, uh, as a reminder, there's the new LHR versions of silicon. The 3080 Ti doesn't have that, but the uh, 3080, 3070, and 3060 Ti do. Those are the light hash rate versions with the reduced hash rate for Ethereum mining. This card will, will only exist in effectively an LHR version, but they're not going to brand it LHR in the box, which makes it a little confusing. Either way, though, GA102-225-A1 is the silicon, uh, the model for this 3080 Ti. In case NVIDIA changes anything in the future, we'll be able to line up our numbers with this one uh, in the event some other one comes out. OK, so what we're going to do now is a recap of some of the stuff on this unique PCB, since you might not have seen the original teardown, or maybe you've forgotten the time since. But a couple things that are interesting to point out on this board. One is if we get our ghost finder back out, you'll see that it's got a small magnet right there. And all that does is attach over here to this thing, once it's got the support of the PCB, obviously. So that's how that's all held together. It doesn't actually do anything. It's just kind of cosmetic. And internally, there's the NVIDIA 12-pin connector. This debuted on the 3080 Ti. This is a weird special NVIDIA variant of an existing well-published standard. And uh, the PCB's got this sort of cutout to it. It's partly for looks, because once they're doing the, I mean, once you're doing cuts to it anyway, you make it look however you want. But also, so that it can fit this sort of unique and bizarre cooler that we've done a lot of testing on. We actually have Schlieren photography of this. If you would like to see actual, uh, the, the air density gradient change around the cooler based on how the cooler behaves. And then we further have testing with um, this in a case so you can see the flow through design versus a standard CPU tower cooler, things like that. So that's all been done in the past. We documented it all very well when the original came out. For the rest, the cables and things. So this cable right here, that goes to this fan. This is a huge pain to reconnect if you take the fan out. Would not advise taking the fan out unless you're going to replace it because it's died or something. It's not a big deal, it's just it's annoying and the cable's very fragile, so uh, it's just a, a point you could break and cause problems for yourself. So if you're cleaning it, I just recommend doing that without taking the fan out if you can. This cable goes to the other fan, very simple stuff here. And then this cable, the, the really annoying one, is actually just an LED cable. If you happen to break this one in removing it, fortunately you're not losing a lot and it's easy to repair because it's just two wires, but that's an LED cable. For cooling, just again, a, a recap of the original. This is a vapor chamber. So that right there is a vapor chamber. There are some heat pipes involved as well. They've got copper heat pipes down in there. It's one, two, three, four that we can see from this angle. And those run through on the opposite side of the vapor chamber uh, through the memory cooling areas and part of the, the GPU core area. I think that pretty much covers this thing. All the other detail we've already done. The card's actually not any different. That's Somewhat disappointing because there were places that uh, NVIDIA could have improved, but it uh, looks like they've been manufacturing these for quite some time now. 
and they may have even been making them with the intent to put them on 3080s at some point. But uh, while they were waiting for silicon, maybe they decided we'll just stop selling FEs, which they sort of did, other than to Best Buy, and start stockpiling for the 3080 tie. Uh, and so here we are. So that's it. The answer is it's not too different. Unfortunately, on one end, that means we don't have a lot of content for this particular video, but the important thing is that we've now seen what the 3080 Ti reference card looks like. Well, reference, not reference. Founder's Edition card looks like under the hood, and the answer is it's about the same. So more power going through it, more memory, more or less the, the same solution in terms of how it all mounts. If there's a difference at all, <laughs> we'll find it in thermal testing, and it'll be in the review, which is already published by the time this goes up. But as we're filming this, we're still working through the review because we needed to do disassembly to get deeper into the thermals and analysis of the data that we do have. So check the review for what all this means, in other words, and to see how it performs in gaming. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. As always, you can go to store.gamersnexus.net or patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. And we'll see you all next TI.